We spent some time at the Western Regional Command and also the Tema Regional Fire Station in Greater Accra to tell the story of these brave men who got injured while battling heroically in the line of duty. In the service, they are known as the bravest men who survived horrific blazes and lived to tell the account but with lifelong scars. Just like the rest of us, a farmer's day begins like any other normal day with the hope to do what one does best. Without knowing when an emergency call may come through, our firemen and their buddies get ready for a possible rescue mission. They arm themselves in their turnout gear, boots, trousers, jacket, gloves and helmet. Now, the team is ready to step out. While we wait for what the day would shape out to be, I try to get to know these men a bit better. Hoped that having a day with these men will make me understand the nature of their job better. I was shocked at a point when the farm men narrated how they were involved in an accident and their recovery process. <laughs> The farmen also recounted a gas explosion at the Ghana Household Utensils Manufacturing Company. Gumco, a household utilities manufacturing company popularly known as Chinese at Sekendi Takrade in the western region on May 9, 2017, that left more than 100 people injured. The explosion, which occurred at about 7 a.m. on Tuesday, led to a four-hour traffic jam in the Twin City. The tanker carrying 30,000 tons of liquefied petroleum gas was offloading into two giant LPG receptacles in the yard when it started leaking profusely. This led to a fire which caused the tanker to break into two. The firemen told the crew they came to work hoping to close peacefully and return to their families. But they never made it back home that day. In fact, some of them rather found themselves in the hospital. As we were about to try to organize, well, all we heard was the sound. Boom! Then I can see my crewmen, everybody scattered. Someone in the gutter. So, in fact, I fell in the gutter. I don't know what happened, but I found myself in the gutter. Through the waves of the explosion, Charlie, it was serious. Everybody was hurt. Badly. All that I remember that I was in the Gapo hospital. The GS that we are wearing, they are all on fire. I have to be tearing my dresses off. They started rolling on the ground so that I may put the fire off. So after that, then one doctor came and sat beside me and said, I should, I should talk late for him to hear. And the doctor said, Ah, my voice has started changing. But if they keep me here for two hours, I'll die. So they have to make provision and fly me to the nearest ICU center. So after five days before I realized that, Ah, where am I? I mean, I'm at the hospital. Where is here? They say, oh no, this is what happened to you. Calm down. I stayed there. They started doing the peeling of the blisters and all that. Because I had multiple bends. Almost about 50% of my body bent. I bent my face, my back, my limbs, my legs. Almost, it's, the lucky I made is that I couldn't get the bend in, at this area, at where my tummy is. Like it should, have, it should be worse. I received treatment over there for 93 days in ICU. Intensive care. I was hanged both my legs and my, I couldn't lie at my back. Because when you lie on the sore too, it doesn't heal. Honestly speaking, it is not easy. Sometimes you go to the dressing chair, you get to your tent, you tell the person, Master, please go. Because what you are feeling in your body, and that kind of painkillers, the drugs that they've been giving, they, they've been giving you to, it's no small drug. I've been taking, they've been giving me Petsedin, Tramadol, and Morphine. Then Diclofenac, 750. Petsedin, 100. Before I can do dress, when they start my dressing from 8, they finish sometime 2 p.m. They took another part of my tie to build my ear. Now that my ear has been built to my skull, so they are now going to remove the ear from the skull. Now they will be doing um, um, implants that will let the hair also grow back. In the process of learning the uh, length of holes, no? me uh, host our appliance and say, we call it na ASU something. 
eji host ne say me koyi another one embra and me di host ne man na me ten ne say me koyi another one aban me dan me chi na me say sound be boom e wo me chi dia me hu ya ne say in from me bia abo me it moved me from baby i'm jinay a call somewhere where the car is like a bomb it into me why the crowd a bomb is and then i had a lot of people shouting the radi jimmy radi jimmy the bomb in the mikro toho into me toho now me share now your duty driver and also at the former or crow now mrs adia miso macro arcanism so your crow now me who said me has say how how for if you're not it's a dear me that was a mean could be the eye and idea who cry me I quite remember say you could do hospital home. No? Blisters in the form me way, no. Omo be fire no? one after the other. Okwa no omo de gos abo. I think say uh, savlon. No omo de afa ukrone ni so awa wa ukrone ni mu So then you see say the first layer skin no. Eko na ka white. It was too much. Tanka no explode ya no. O sun na esivu mani mu ti. Me pee and I'm who you say, Miss Sanumio, no dear. I see my matale and so I see them, my chino dear. Now, me say, you know, you be on inside, you overrun in saying to my chino dear, and she to me, some you know, and a man, and I see. Prepare, I'm not Kabia and for road news, so into a fian quanta hair, Sibia. Not just say the more the dead bodies are called by Vina. With the injuries somewhat scarred for life, they tell us that their deformity affected their families as some family members had to quit their jobs to take care of them. The news team spoke to a wife and a mother of two of the victims in the Gumko gas explosion. <laughs> Libia obey ye bia je semia ti mami je ma djuma ne to ko na me hwe na na ja ti ne nsa no e ko no mu yi ba ne jina ne nsa ha no ni ntin no nyina aso sori a e jina jina ti omo kan se omo de ne be ko kwalebu akoye ni se ji ni panifu ne so ne tem bia na omo ba ha omo ba be sra no omo be se de ne wote enuro Ni ya chuo nre ma ya hospital ni ya kituwa si bra beto na wasi skeni wa wasi ya kopo bisi ya ni ya dia beto na kwa risa mikodru efya mkuanta na mihu nsa ni ya meba ne dano na yesu ane eja onkuwa migi niti ane ni ya funkuwa na umamba niji ni baby ya ya baniji ubedi dia chesa mti tisha ni num. Na na who said, Member, no more Branca, sir. No more called dressing room, dear, and dear, young can. Nay, I am she, she, Nandri, or more troll, near Cotto, Mrs. Star, or this car cry no call Bobby, sir, near the Acoton, Drew, Copham, say, the seat in the Beco, and Sasicano, Abba, near name, near court, near frame, near court, and say, Drain, you man, I don't know. Now, me, my be fee, Nanny Junior bread, you didn't eat. On so I could done home. I'm right four to five. Now me make up. No, no, so I ba. Sign to hospital, dear. Your bread, your firm. I cop him two months, two weeks. Exactly. And son, na I may yard room. No, ye 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 in some mark in a dear, oh, the night hang you now could see the two you now. And see a pride, oh, pride. Now, me, I say, Meda, and then a sister, and then a brother, sir, your shen, and so dear. You answer your brave, pa. And see a praying in a chin, no more in a totem, no more fan, no, a shen uniform. 
Meniji, Sanse Obreya, Yamiadu, Omoafani Jumi. Some rescuers in Tema also shared their story with the team. 2005, September, it was a Sunday morning. And then there was this distress call, an accident on the motorway, which we proceeded. When we were going, we, uh, 207 bus crossed us, and then we suffered an accident. My kneecaps medically was broken. That is, I know whether a ligament or what, but I was in POP for about four months from my waist it was only my toe that was showing, okay? I couldn't do anything. I have to be carried to and fro. And then uh, when the POP was removed, I realized it wasn't still okay. I have to go back. They did a surgery on the knee and it was fixed again. I was again in a POP. So about a year, I couldn't do anything on my own. As a man, there are things I can't do, as you see me standing here, so strong. But I can't play football anymore. I used to be a good footballer, but I can't play football anymore because of my knee. I can't mount this fire engine anymore because of the height. My knee, I cannot do it. I can't run anymore because of my knee. So this is the problem that I have now, as you see me standing here. It's, it's difficult for me. And then looking at me aging now, I sometimes feel so afraid of that when I get to around 60, 70, how would my life be like? Can I be able to walk well? You know, when you are aging, things go down, so you slow down. So that has been my problem. Four bars involved in an accident on the motorway. So we were <laughs> called to go to the scene to save lives. On uh, approaching the accident scene as most of the cars were slowing down we realized a car just bumped into our front so our driver started applying brakes it was drizzling at then so when he applied he just veered off the road as for me what i saw was i was in the in the hospital the news broke down that i was dead so what I realized, what I can talk about when I was in a wheelchair in the general hospital. But you realize that the pain was still coming when you take in the painkillers and all that. My injury was on my waist because I fell and then my coccyx hit on the floor. So when I went to the hospital, I was supposed to do a surgery on the coccyx, but where I was so fortunate to have a good doctor that managed it up to a level that the pain came down. So now it's on and off. That is when, when the, the cold start setting in and all that. So it was my cousin. My auntie as a nurse knew what was going on. So she thought I was losing my manhood, seriously. So at a point she comes in and asks, how are you feeling? Do you feel a man and then I I told her for that one unless I tested before so then I, I I laughed over it and then we all laughed over it and seriously I, by then I was only 25 years where I had not married and all that so a young man going through this you know the trauma that you you go through now I can't sit on the bicycle again because when I sit it hits on the coxels there was a petrol tanker fire at uh, uh, um uh, Prince Lord Yard. We were fighting the fire. Actually, we suppressed the fire, almost done. But later, the, um, you know, because of the petrol was spilling, uh, the situation escalated. Then the fire engulfed some of us. My people were able to run away. They were able to escape from the fire. But two of us, myself and um, Eswa well, Javon were trapped by the fire. I went out. I didn't know what happened again. Before I would see myself, I was at the, the Majimra Hospital. Then we got bent. It wasn't easy. It was an experience I would never forget in my life. Because it was, it was 
an incident, I saw that I'm dead. I saw myself in the fire later. I didn't see anything again. And I, I thought this is the end of my life as a firefighter. There was a fire at Sakumono and it involved plastic. They, 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 they manufacture plastic, uh, how do you call it? Uh, rubber bags and stuff. And during the process, firefighting, you know when plastic melts, it turns into water, it's very liquid, you, you will not see. So we were there and I was like in the pool, in a pool of melted plastic. And in the process of, we were breaking doors and stuff, so we were trying to enter. I slipped and fell into it and my body was covered in melted rubber. The way I was screaming and people were, my team stopped fighting the fire and like they were cooling me with the water because my body, it was like I was in hell because every part of my body was just burning, I was screaming and I remember I passed, I passed out, I passed out of the scene and when I, I, I opened my eyes I was at the hospital. Despite the hazards that come with being a smoke jumper, personnel also have to contend with other challenges. Inadequate personal protection equipment, PPE, is a major one. We are told that many personnel do not have personal PPE and so sharing is common. You will see that there's a lot of diseases and sicknesses among, we have the, uh, uh, a lot of sicknesses, but the PPE that we, we wore, when I wore and I go home, the same person will take over from me wore the same PP, including the boot and the, everything, the face mask and everything. I will change over to somebody and the person will come over. Even when I send it to fire and the thing is wet, when you count, there's none. The same thing you have to maneuver or you have to look for anything of your own and done and one and go and fight the fire. At least everybody should have his own face mask because I breathe into it. Incidents, you know, me, I was in overall. Now, me first send your overrun MLT, the state overrun MLT do here now. Me who say it's not proper, like say we call food, I call you do my with overrun. Into no, you need PPE sir. Okay, bad boy. PPE, personal protective equipment, say you need the air one. It do time bia, cause you say no yare be bring na ba. It is a obi she jacket, na say or no be be yare do my night. No, you go for nice old barber shan morning. You say, you won't pull much now with him, but I won't say, or won't pull you fine. Coming into direct contact with smoke, which contains carbon monoxide and other toxic gases from burning substances, has always been a part of a fire scene. Most of these firemen go to the field without the necessary breathing apparatus, BE, and face mask. I want to see the fire service hospital is long overdue. The police has hospital, the army have this. Fire, no. And not even a yearly checkups. We don't have it. I want to see that coming up now. If we have uh, this hospital established, we come in, detoxify ourselves. We know we mount, we move in our uniforms and whatever we will realize that we are so uh, much birthed with toxics and stuff. We go in anyhow, we infest people in our vehicles going in and there. But if we have these detoxification centers at all the stations, we come back there, you don't detoxify yourself, get your appropriate clothing quickly, you move on. Uh, it is something I would love to see happening. Having now been educated on some of the challenges of the job, I inquired from them whether there is a special fire emergency fund to cater for them when they suffer injuries in the line of duty. According to them, the Ghana National Fire Service refunds all the monies spent during hospitalization and they also get a workman's compensation where applicable. But there is no special fire emergency fund to cater for them after an injury. There is also no comprehensive insurance for firemen in the country. They also say even where a refund is applied for, the paperwork takes a while and they sometimes have to borrow to cover their bills before money is spent is refunded. As for the medical bills, hmm. if you don't have money, it will be a problem. You 
you pay later, then you submit your receipt to the management and the service will refund whatever you have lost. We, we went to labor office to you know, pick a form for workman compensation and it took us about almost two years before you know, they were able to keep, give us the workman's compensation. Yes, I know my hotel back. Tina Bissian, I'm about the bar welfare, the Bajay Bissian, the co other companies, the Koji Bissian, and now the Malaysian movie because the Biano, many of Bano, the Foka, the Abba Hospital, many of the Sian Fuaco. See, he has said Bibia, this would dimitch into Tembia, my transportation, the Koye, two, 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 two. But Bia Bacobia, this will be dimitch. Intimate farming son and so be beer, intimate be beer, as a food that cry, this and it's one will be there, call around sooner, or call you know, I bet from say, sorry, I am going to be a fire service for so much emergency, no, or be a problem, or bumper, or muntimin channel. Now, be a our service in the team, now be a service, no, agent, I would say, Nippon own Janet, and I'll be with Scanner, a bit me to ya, be a person. With this information, we asked some more questions. How long does it take for monies to be refunded? And what is the process for a refund and workman compensation? We do not have a hospital to ourselves. So you go to a hospital, you are treated, and then you submit a bill for us to pay. The payment is made under our goods and services. So as and when we receive money for goods and services, we also make the payment to personnel. And sometimes the goods and services do not come on time. And that is why normally there are delays with regards to the payment of the medical refund. Per the PNDC law 187 of 1987, when somebody gets injured, let's say in fire service, on operational front, the person is taken to the hospital. And then when he's taken to the hospital, we has to submit all the bills associated with the injury to the labor uh, office. Then the labor will now give you a form which you send to the hospital, to the medical doctor that treated you. He, the medical doctor, is supposed to determine the extent to which you have suffered an injury. So when he fills that form and is given to the person who suffered the injury, he sends it back to the labor. The labor will now do the computerization. When they have finished with the computerization, depending upon the percentage that is awarded to the person in terms of injury, they don't even give the bill to the employee to submit, but they write straight to fire service. So when it comes to us, because we have done a budget and we have included it in our budget that there's something called a Wexman compensation, which we are anticipating, we send it to Minister of Finance making reference to the budget line, the Minister of Finance will also release the money to us. Then we make the payment to the person who apparently suffered the injury. When we hear that people have died at fire scenes and all that, civilians, it's not the burns that killed them, it's the smoke. And that little smoke that there, that civilians inhale they die. That same and excess of that, firemen are inhaling them and they are living. So we feel so much for our people who get injured on the prisoner field. We feel for them. We feel for them because the level of smoke in the average firefighter, if I tell you, you'll be shocked. To the extent that a fire officer who has never smoked a cigarette before, never taken alcohol before, 
goes on retirement, go to the hospital, and is told, my friend, you better stop smoking. He says, me, I've never smoked before. He says, I'm telling you, look at your lungs. It's there on the screen. Then he gets back home, go through his memory and realize, no, the fire have been fighting. The accumulated smoke. When you go to the advanced countries, after every smoke, after every fire, firefighters are taken through a detoxification process so that whatever smoke they have inhaled goes off. But it's not like that in the country. And all of us, I've taken firefighters for granted. It's not like management of Ghana National Fire Service is not thinking about its staff. We are really thinking about our staff. For the injured that end up with some physical disfigurement, even attending social functions sometimes becomes difficult. And the psychological trauma is telling. The bravest say they are sometimes scared of the sound of their own siren or any form of sound they come into contact with. One funny thing is that, you see kids, they normally make fun of sad things. When I get out in the room, they'll be calling me Al-Qaeda, robot. But when you call me, I can't just turn the head. I have to turn the whole body before I can talk to you. So when they see me Al-Qaeda, and sometimes when you are going in the premises of people, you feel like, Charlie, you look at yourself. Ah, look at how I was going to them. And they'll be asking you questions that you cannot tell lies. How does it? You some kids who will be come and touch it and find out that, ah, is it paining you or is it not paining you? It's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. When they, when they, when they checked my pressure, I was almost to 200. So I was being put on this nephilipine and lesilopri to be taking it every morning and be checking my, my pressure. Now I'm, 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 a, I'm a, um, what is called a hypertensive patient, which I was not part. I was not a hypertensive patient. I've now been put on medic medication. I have my monitor. That I monitor myself every day to be sent into hospital. Because sometimes you wake up and you'll be feeling dizzy, especially when you hear a sound that is a little strange. That flashback normally happens to you. My boys, at first, they were just trying to run away from me, but two, three days later, they saw that, yeah, this is that. So we just, but it wasn't easy, especially. When I'm just quiet and I just heard the sound of a matches, just the small flame of light, I will either fall down or try to run away. It wasn't easy at all. And even when you sleep, it's, it's like backlogs. It keep on coming. Keep on. So psychologically, I, I, I was not good at all. We joined the service very fit, very fit and if it were to be somewhere, uh, I know there are health checkups yearly to know your status compared to your entrance status. So they will know, okay, at this particular moment, you pick up a particular injury or disease which could be attributed to the work you are doing, for which some compensation packages could be meted out to say, okay, because of this, that, 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 that. And during your exiting to uh, comparing your health status from the starting to that exit in the middle age and through the exiting, they can then see that, okay, at line of duties, you pick up series of this and that and that. That will also warrant what you will be packaged with for. We have had degrees of injuries. You see us moving up and down very strong, but inwardly, we are suffering, especially when sometimes the weather becomes so cold. Uh, it, it's not easy for us at all as firefighters. So, Mohana said, one the Sarino, another friend said, you never fire an alarm bell, so I said, me and Sam, if a panic be fear be there, hey, and so no, my Sam, I could be on a more quiet about some new BC. Me share my home crying, say, I'm quite near here. You won't quit your idea, but I am who I am a rahu because nang yes, see na me see. Be a hook ram caught in a car, Munasa, a corabit in China, would be bashing it you to me who said no. There might not per se or so ordinance a cap, Miss Kane. Okay, it makes life feel bad. Minati fire lamp and I'm your machine because me who be me do be a sonata or move you so gas 
cylinders no na o hwe wo chi bibi na cylinders wo na obi aso kropot ne si wa na me yam shishi me ebu okrampo a me hu sai ma me timi ko fa chire ba bi kura me mpese me fo we reached out to the director of public relations at the Ghana National Fire Service ACFO1 Timothy or Safwe Fum for some more answers First, he spoke about the sharing of the personal protection equipment, PPE. I'm the first person to tell you that we are not even halfway equipped. But notwithstanding, we cannot sit down and say because we are not equipped, it will not work. Um, the little that we have, we make do with what should be done. Uh, fortunately for us, uh, government has given us the go ahead and we are taking two tranches of equipment that under normal circumstances each firefighter must have his own PPE however the present situation we have is not like that we only have one set where if you come and you close and you are leaving you leave the PPE behind for the next person who is coming to also use the same PPE. Ideally, that is not uh, good, especially health-wise, because you may be carrying a certain disease on your skin. And so if you use the same apparel and I can also use the same apparel, it may transmit that disease onto me. So it is not the best. We are, however, trying to uh, get one for each firefighter, dedicated one, so that when you close, you can take your PPE away. I also come and bring in my PPE. But once we have not gotten there, what we have is what we use. And so um, we provide what we call disinfectant for regular washing of this uh, apparel so that we we'll minimize the transmission of the diseases from one person to the other. For breathing apparatus, we have breathing apparatus sets in the system. They are in abundance. However, um, the plant that we use to fill is what is down. Every region used to have one breathing apparatus plant for refilling. However, all of them have broken down because it, they have expired. The, the lifespan has expired, so all of them have broken down. That notwithstanding, um, the service management have started buying what we call mobile filling plants. Those are portable ones uh, that can fill maybe three cylinders at a go. And so we have one in the northern sector, one in the middle sector, one in the southern sector that is doing these fillings. ACFO1 Safwe Fum called for proper medical care and systems for farming. Our job is an emergency job. The minimum is that you can get hurt. The ultimate is that you can lose your life. And so, with such an institution, the least we could get is a medical system that easily takes care of personnel. However, this is not the situation at present. We don't have any medical care system that takes care of the firefighter when he is hurt in the line of duty. Every firefighter works 24 hours in a day. So the minimum the state can do for us is to get us proper and adequate health care system to take care of the fire officer. Situations have arisen where in the line of duty Officers are hurt, you send them to hospital and they expect you to pay before they take care of the officer who is injured. And I think this is not right. This is an institution. So you should note that once it's an institution that is bringing a casualty, for that matter, a personnel, the institution will come and take care of the personnel. So my appeal to our medical facilities is that any time we bring in an officer who needs urgent care, they should kindly 
take care of the person and all others will follow. We have situations where people are injured and because at the, at the time of going to hospital, there is no money, they have to find money from their own sources or family members to pay for refunds to be made later. The safety of every farmer matters, but how important is their safety to the Ghana National Farm Service? Our operation is like that safety is paramount. When you are proceeding to any incident, what is at the back of our mind is safety, because you have to be safe before you can save others. Trying all these things to make sure that our men, when proceeding to incidents, be in it fire, be in it rescue, be in it RTC, they are always protected and safe. Because we need to arrive there safe before we can save others and then prevent fire from spreading and then putting out fire. Perhaps now is the time to think about the actual risk that farmmen take whenever they are called upon to save the lives and property of unknown people. The slogan of the Ghana National Fire Service is, We don't take cover. What others run away from, we run towards. A fireman is a friend. Stop attacking firefighters. The fireman is an angel sent from God to save you. But to these men, they say their friendships sometimes turn out to be an attack from the public. Recently, they, 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 they squandered the whole fire station. They squandered the whole thing, break everything. They are, they are laptop, they are uh, computers, they are, they are stationaries. They squandered everything. Why? Because they called them, the response was not what the public was expecting. And we are risking our lives. And this is where we have long and short term illness. The short terms are what we have received now. Some people go and they inhale toxic. Because we don't come to the public for you, for the public to know that this is what is going on in our lives. So it seems they don't appreciate that after we execute our duty, we normally face problems. It's painful, but I don't blame them a lot. You see, that is why I'm saying that is why we are here today. For the public to know that this is what we also go through. I would say they are not aware of those injuries that fire officers suffer during uh, saving lives and property. We are sacrificing a lot. You see, incidents do happen and everybody is fleeing to safety. And because of your calling as a fireman, people are running away and then you are rather going into the dangerous what, area. Those of us in Tema, when you attend fire around Ashamai, the attacks that we face, but for us that we have the passion, we are ever ready for, to, uh, to save lives and properties. You will sometimes get there, they start throwing stones at you. Meanwhile, you are not the one who sets the fire. You go and they tell you, oh, these people serve the can, there's no water in the vehicle. But I always advise that when they do that, we don't have to push them away. Let's get close to them and talk to them. Let them understand it. The reason why we, they should know they, they have to know the capacity of the fire engine, the water that they are bringing to fire scene. We want to tell our story so that the public will also know that we are for them. Anytime we come to fight fire, we are there to assist them. They should not always take us like um, enemies. There are other cases that if I say I will tell, and a case um, when we had a distress call that there, were, there was fire outbreak. We got there and it was a demonstration. People were demonstrating and burning ties on the road. In actual fact, we, we stopped at a distance and were cautioned not to go close. Fine. From there, we, we came down, we saw the police around. Then uh, we saw some opinion leaders and assemblymen. We told them that what is happening, we cannot stand here and look at it. So they should, we should all come together and put the fire off or extinguish it. Some agreed, some didn't. In the course of extinguishing the fire, they started throwing stones from behind. And two of my officers that are led to the fire scene, 
were injured, one on the eye. Today, he's still having some problems on the eye. From statistics from the Ghana National Fire Service, more than 40 firemen are injured with over a 10 losing their lives each year. So far, over 90 of the injured men have received their workman compensation. In recognition of their countless hours volunteered over many years, J.J. Edmondson, an operational firefighter in the Clyde Cardinal Fire Brigade and a lieutenant in the District 8 Headquarters Fire Brigade in the Country Fire Authority, CFA, in Victoria, Australia, instituted the celebration of the International Firefighters Day, IFFD, annually on May 4, to recognize and honor the sacrifices that firefighters make to ensure that their communities and environment are as safe as possible. The day coincides with the feast day of St. Florian, the patron saint of firefighters. St. Florian was found to be the first known commander of a firefighting squad in the Roman Empire in 300 AD and was credited with a powerful protector from the dangers of fire and water. Here, Edmondson. The role of a firefighter in today's society, be it urban, rural, natural environment, volunteer, industrial, defense force, aviation, motorsport, or other, is one of dedication, commitment, and sacrifice, no matter what country we reside and work in. In the fire service, we fight against our common enemy, fire, no matter what country we come from, what uniform we wear, or what language we speak. The core values guiding the service are enshrined in the eight cardinal points of the service emblem, gallantry, observation, loyalty, dexterity, sympathy, tactfulness, explicitness, and perseverance. As the saying goes, a fireman does not stop when he is tired, but stopped when he is done. Some fires may take a few minutes or hours to be brought under control. Some may take a day, over 24 hours, 72 hours, or even more. They hustle to make it in record time to the scene to salvage the property from burning and be sure everyone is safe, sometimes even paying the ultimate price. Despite the serious risk on the job, such as heat exhaustion, burns, physical and mental stress, coming into contact with high levels of carbon monoxide and other toxic hazards, these fighters will live by their pledge to continue to protect Mother Ghana. The life of the fireman matters, but who rescues the rescuer? The forgotten heroes deserve better. When you bow your head in prayer, say a word for the fireman because... That firefighter might save me one day.